Good morning. Bom dia. Uh, buenos dias. <laughs> okay, we are going to continue the, our very interesting lecture uh, with practical view from someone who really builds uh, uh, fuel cells, as the one is sitting on, on the top of the table. And uh, please let's let's give it, uh, welcome again to Gerhard. It, Dr. Gerhard. Good morning. Fine. Have a good day yesterday. So, we today we will talk about hydrogen production, the fuel for the fuel cell. We we'll see that we it's possible to produce a very different kind of fuel cell of fuel or different kind of fuel cell. And let's start. <laughs> Here. I saw this picture yesterday, I find I think it was very nice. It's a piece of puzzle for the self sufficient living. The last piece. Here was on the climate change conference 20, 2009. We saw very important people participate and discuss the climate and the hydrogen future. This is fun. It's amazing. It's fun. It's 60 million tons of hydrogen. 600 million tons of hydrogen. Per second, converting to 596 million tons of energy. It's not nuclear fusion. But about the remaining, only 4 million tons per second. Some people say, how long time will you have to start with hydrogen? For them, they will start to burn energy. They have enough energy. Uh, Professor Gerhard, would you please just... Uh, no, uh, yeah, okay. you, can, uh, you can take it out okay, good. if you wish. Here is a, a study from DOE, Department of Energy from the United States. He showed different kind of technology on different years, near e term, mid term, long term. And we can see here on the near term what happened today is the network was reforming. We use more natural reforming to produce hydrogen as for electrolyzer. Every hydrogen that we, we receive here, only 4% is from electrolysis. Or for reformer from natural gas or coal reformer. This gas that we have here in this experiment is a natural gas reformer. But we have another supplier that he used an uh, electrolyzer from Solvay. The quality of the gas is much higher because, but we can have very good, very, the same quality as natural gas reformer, but we need to spend much more money on the purification. On the electrolysis, you have a better quality without the necessity to do the purification. It's, or we have some purification, but uh, much more, much less expensive. And here we can see biomass gasification. This is near term, 
what do you see on this this morning here i yesterday i saw new data from biomass gasification and what i was very proud to see how many different how many new gasification are running on the world on the midterm this the electrolysis we have different kind of electrolysis w here the mean is near term it's about the high temperature electrolysis different kind of technology that they use this a fuel cell like a fuel cell this high temperature fuel cell solid oxide fuel cell but we will use the opposite but we can we can use the same materials then we start here again the electrolysis also a new kind of electrolysis with solar electrolysis here we saw on mid-term long term co-gasification on the future we will have co-gasification why not is not clean maybe so not maybe not but we can do a very clean process with cool gasification with cool we can we can have a very clean process the opex is more intensive then we start here the high temperature electrolyzer it's a different kind of electrolyzer and needed a different kind of electrolysis but for electrolysis we need energy where come the energy? We can use the energy from the sun. Then we have another kind of photoelectrochemical process. Then we have the solar thermochemical hydrogen. And then the photobiological hydrogen. All this technology is running today. Here is lab scale. Here we start also in pilot plant and here all these we have an industrial plant the capacity will increase you can see the capacity size of the capacity here but one target from the OE he put very important target and the target for hydrogen is four dollar per kilo this target is to compete with the uh, hydraulic electric power and different kind of powers. Here, you can see the status from hydrogen today. We have one million documents on the internet. We s saw here a number of papers that are producing here. Here is the United States. It's China. Brazil is, I can't see here, but it's here. But we have some development on hydrogen. Here we can see the, how the number of papers are increasing for the days, for every year. And here we had a, a petrol oil crisis, and here we had a Echo 192. When this happened, the number of science start new research in public results. So we start today with hydrogen production and storage for fuel cell. First, the fuel processing may define the conversion of the whey primary fuel. This kind of different kind of fuel supply to fuel cell system. In the fuel cell system, in the fuel uh, in the fuel gas required by the stack. Here important, each type of fuel cell stack has some particular fuel requirement. For example, 
for phosphoric acid fuel cell, the hydrogen rich and contain less than 0.5% of carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a poison for phosph phosphoric acid fuel cell, as so for PEM. And carbon monoxide on PEM fuel cell, this cell here, need accessory carbon can have any can have any monox monoxide free. But molten carbonate fuel cell and solid oxide fuel cell, they both are capable to utilize carbon monoxide through the gas shift reaction. This gas shift reaction that we put va water vapor inside the process react on the carbon monoxide and occur, this reaction occur on the cell. And the solid oxide fuel cell, they have an internal reformer and can utilize, utilize, utilize methane with the fuel cell. But phosphoric acid and PEM is not possible. We need much more temperature to occur this process here the internal reforming. Is if you use nickel, we, we it's possible to process in 600 degrees. But the PEM fuel cell operates 65 degrees. And here we can saw some different uh, gas species, the hydrogen, carbon monoxide, methane, carbon dioxide, sulfur. And here we can see uh, on PEM fuel cell, poison is CO. But here we know, we know that here uh, is there is also poison for uh, sulfurs, also poison for the fuel cell. Alkaline fuel cell, the CO2 is a poison. On phosphoric acid, CO is also poison. Morgan carbonate fuel cell, sulfur is poison. And on also sulfur on SOFC. Because sulfur reacts on the catalyst that they have here, is nickel. Carbon monoxide react on the catalyst that we have here, is platinum. Then the poison is for the platinum, or is corrosive for the electrode. And here we can see that 4% of the hydrogen of the wood in about 50 billion cubic meter per year from hydrogen that we produce today, 4% come from electrolysis, 18% coal, 48% natural gas, and only 30% oil. Then we, here we ha can have an ide idea, the hydrogen production on the world. But all the, the most hydrogen we will produce for the petrochemical industry. Here we can saw again some uh, DOE target for different kind of technology that produce hydrogen. And here we can saw the how the target uh, change every six years and what they are changing the, ch the target. And here we can see the distributed hydrogen production for natural gas. Another target, electrolysis hydrogen production. Also, we can see the price. They need to decrease. Another, center wind of water electrolysis. Decrease. Look here, very drastic reduction. And the company, the institute, they try to find to 
to fix this target. Central wind water electrolysis also squeeze. Look here. Biomass gasification, pyrolysis, hydrogen production. Look here. Gasification, biomass gasification. They reduce a lot from one dollar. Solar driven hydrogen temper chemical hydrogen production. This for the Department of Energy from the United States, they think that they will have the lost cost of the hydrogen production. Photochemical hydrogen production. So, and here we can saw also in another data, not for uh, DOE, that we can compare the cost per kilowatt hour hydrogen with different kind of technology and the emission of CO2. Then we can saw that with natural gas, the cost is very low. Here, they will uh, emit more CO2. This is, uh, we can understand why the price is so low and why no? Só voltar um pouco. Não, voltar. Mais um. Mais um. Voltar mais. 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 Aqui. Now, we, we understand the reason that we have more natural gas reformer. The price to produce is very low. So. And here, you can saw that some technology, look here, coal gasification with CO2 sequestration, look here is coal and with very low CO2 emission. This is reason that they put on the future th this technology. Coal gasification, normal gasification, here. Coal gasification with CO2 sequestration, here. Uh, electrolysis and this kind of te technology is the future. For the coal, for the yeah. natural gas, and for the oil, watch. I don't. I have no okay. idea what kind of technology they use. Yeah, like uh, using oil. I will show you t today, but I, I have a picture from the uh, gas uh, as oil. The name is Raft. It's a subproduct from pet petrol, from oil, and they have a in train flow gasifier. In Brazil, we have four plant in Araucari, in Paraná, and they have to do the gasification of the rust to produce urea, urea and ammonia. Good. I have the picture here, but not in this computer. So, hydrogen. Uh. Well, no. One more question. Oh. My name is Chova from Hungary. Uh, what technology is used to CO2 sequestration? That's not very clear. It's like clean coal. It doesn't exist. Clean hydrogen with, with, with coal. What technology do you use to capture the CO2? Yeah, I will talk a little about this. 
but there is some project that one is on the process it's more easy to you have a, a rectisol that same that they use on the Araucaria plant from Petrobras is a methanol then they cool the methanol and absorb the CO2 and then you read the rectisol again to put off the CO2 for example on biomass plant the, co the companies biomass plant gasification plant the companies like to buy this CO2 because a green CO2 another process is to inject uh, back to the to the well so, so, okay. Is, okay. yeah just Thank make you. sure it stays there yeah forever <laughs> good luck <Okay>. thank <laughs> you petrobras do this on the on the petroleum refinery extraction petroleum extraction so hydrogen is most abundant element of the universe 75 percent 30 percent of the mass of the sun third most abundant of the air on the earth colorless odorless very very low density 14 times more dense than the air and here is is nice one kilo of hydrogen has approximately the same energy that 3.5 liter of oil 2.1 kilo of natural gas and 2.8 kilo of petrol this combustion generate 2,000 kilocal per kilo some very high uh, uh, elevate enthalpy if we compare density energy we saw here hydrogen 141 megajoule four kilo gasoline 47 megajoule per kilo natural gas 47 methane methanol ethanol kerosene coal and wood it's very different one point here is uh, here we have they are on the gas phase here solid phase this is di is different because we note here only kilo but the area that they occupy is very different here we need to it's a normal uh, uh, cubic meter not pressurized but we can compare the the data so hydrogen production we can have different kind found for uh, hydrogen gasification for florist or bi biological process that decompose the florist and produce methane and then produce hydrogen waste of the sugarcane production from uh, biogas uh, from the direct from the sugarcane production from a water electrolysis for hydro or solar eolic we have two big projects running today uh, one is from CESP uh, to produce in another from a transmission energy project also from oil to produce hydrogen We have different kind of technology of fuel cell, but one I didn't mention is a reverse fuel cell. But we, what's a reverse fuel cell? It's like electrolysis, up-pam electrolysis, and up-pam fuel cell have fast the same materials. Change a little from the electrode. So one is titanium, another carbon black, with graphite, and, but a solid oxide fuel cell for produce energy and the electrolysis high temperature electrolysis from the basis of, CO, uh, of solid act fuel cell is the same 
there is a, a, a project from, the, from NASA, its the name is Helios. They have 74 meters the length of the other wings. The wings. And then it's a very, it's a very special aircraft, and they run without uh, external com fuel 25 hours. They have batteries, photovoltaic panels, and uh, operate 25 hours. But we have, we mean some primary fuel. We have natural gas that we can reform. We have methanol can reform or direct methanol fuel cell. We have biogas decomposition from the garbage, gas reformation, ammonia reformation. Ah, yesterday on the internet, I tried to change my presentation for today. I find a company that's selling on the internet ammonia fuel cell. For a long time, 10 years ago, I saw on, on the fuel cell congress a, a company there. But now, it's very nice product. Well designed. Ethanol, strategic for Brazil, but not only for Brazil. And to storage, we can uh, direct hydrogen tanks, 35 bars, but the European trend to 7 bars, 700 bars. Metal hydrate, carbon nanotube, liquid hydrogen, I will discuss more about it. On the hydrogen production, we have the water electrolysis. And we have different kind of water electrolysis. The conventional electrolysis, we have the old electrolysis that you, they use um, mercury. They have the advanced electrolysis with new electrodes, special membranes, like a PEM membrane, a an affion. And we have also the fossil fuel and biomass gasification. Then we saw this reaction here. Then we have the partial oxidation of heavy hydrocarbons. Is the RAS, that you told, ask me. Steam reforming of ethanol and natural gas. Then we start with thermal decomposition of water. High temperature, the, the water decompose. We have the chemical water decomposition, sorry here, with iron chloride with hydrogen and also byproducts in this waste, the very famous chloroalkali process. All the materials from the PEM fuel cell, the membrane, start here. Start to use on chloroalkali process and then they change the technology to, to use on the PEM fuel cell. Is it possible to produce with like waste water? Uh, can you go back in the slides? Yeah, this thermal decomposition of water, this process. Is it possible to produce hydrogen using like waste water? some catalyst is much more efficient. It's possible, yeah. What happened on the nuclear reactor? So, I like this picture here because we have here the fuel cell, fuel cell type with the temperature here we saw the solid oxide fuel cell that run high temperature, molten carbonate fuel cell, 600 degrees, phosphoric acid fuel cell, 200 degrees, and PEM fuel cell, 80, 100 degrees. And then, here we have natural gas or liquid fuel, ethanol, for example, methanol, 
for methanol, we need to start our evaporation to produce gas. Then, on liquid fuel, we didn't have sulfur, but natural gas, we need to desulfurize the natural gas. When it desulfurizes, we can use direct here, because here they have nickel as catalyst, and the sulfur will could react with the ni nickel. Then they need to put out the nickel. Here you can, you have some, uh, you can convert to hydrogen and fuel to produce a thin gas. Then it will be more easy to produce energy here. Some parts you like to uh, change uh, CO, say you, uh, CO, mono carbon monoxide, to have more hydrogen. Then we have the shift reaction. Then we can use direct on the phosphoric acid fuel cell. But the PEM fuel cell, the normal PEM fuel cell, they are very intolerant, look here, less than 10 ppm of uh, carbon monoxide. Then they need to have a CO2 selective oxidation. They put very little part of oxygen inside the hydrogen to oxide the carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. Then we have carbon dioxide, no problem. When we use high temperature, HTPM is possible to increase the tolerance of the, the of this carbon monoxide to two point or two three percent. This is fantastic. So we start with reforming process. The gas that we have here in the cylinder. We start with and also the gas, the process that we have here on this gas here is from the steam reforming ethanol or natural gas reforming. But this is an endothermic process. This high yield of hydrogen, steam ethanol reforming, this is steam ethanol reforming, uh, they can produce hydrogen at the same gas in the ratio of 3.1 or 5.1. On fischer trop process to produce gasoline, we may use 2 per 1. But we have some variation of the process. If you use different kind of catalyst, we can change all the reaction. Then the catalyst is very important to direct, to uh, show the way, but what product we like to have. Here we have a, a INT from Brazil. They're studying very strong uh, catalyst. Also here in the po Sao Paulo University, in Polytechnic School, we have one of the best team to, s to work catalyst. Steam methane reforming. Here we can, s can see the reactions. We have the methane react with uh, water, gas, uh, high temperature water, and produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen. The CO2, CO2 CO carbon monoxide, can react with water vapor will produce CO2 plus hydrogen. All this reaction, they use nickel as catalyst. They run in high temperature process. They have an indirect uh, flame outside reformer to heat all the process. Because this year, they operate without oxygen, but it's possible to operate also with oxygen 
but then is another name of process. On the steam, steam reforming, depend of the temperature of the process, you can change the product that we will have. Look here, the, the concentration of hydrogen increase when you increase the temperature. And here, ah. uh, I can go back. <laughs> and here, one big problem from the, all the catalysts that run on high temperature, the same of the, for the carbonate fuel cell on, uh, on SFC fuel cell, is the risk that on the fuel cell system can form carbon inside the fuel cell, inside the reformer catalyst. This can occur in several areas of the system where hot fuel gas is present. But it's possible to control this if you uh, put a little water inside. I will show some pictures about this. Here, a simple expedient to reduce the risk of carbon, carbon monoxide, carbon, of formation of carbon, is to add steam and the fuel stream. This principal effect of this to promote the shift reaction which was, has the effect to reduction the partial pressure of the carbon monoxide. Then we reduce the pressure. This team also so leads to the carbon gasification reactor that is really very fast. Here's a, a project from Siemens, solid outside fuel cell. Then we can he see here the sulfurization and here the catalytic adiabatic pre-reformer and here the high temperature fuel cell. Then we have the autothermal reformer. We note here that there is, we put a little oxygen inside the, the reformer and here is minus 50. Then we is uh, like a, a, a steam reformer, but when we put oxygen inside, we can uh, heat more easy the reformer. And the ratio of the sink gas proportion changed also. Was 3.1. One, now it's 2.1. Here's some example for steam reformer and from Siemens, that is the control. But there is a reformer from Germany and they can use different kind of fuel, natural gas, propane, gasoline, diesel, kerosene, and ethanol. Here we can see the uh, uh, design of reformer. Here, is your, here you have the burner. Here we have the evaporization of the fuel. Here you have the reformative, reforma, reformative zone. Then heat and change. Then here you have the shift reaction. It's a lower temperature. Again, heat and changer. And here the last part to Rec uh, remove all other contaminants, CO remotion. And here we can also use pressure swing absorption, prox, partial oxidation, and also palladium membrane. It's very useful in some new small uh, reformer. So here is a, a diagram from our German reformer. Then here you can see the reformer and all the process that they have to control the process. 
I will show more details of the project. Here you can see this part here, the temperature of the reformer, here the temperature inside the reformer, outside the reformer, here the, the power of the stack, they change the power, the electronic load, and here we saw the answer that the the, te the temperature that the from the cell increase, then decrease, then increase and decrease. And the temperature of the reformer stays stable. This is very important that th this reformer work with the fuel cell. Here then we start, interrupt the fuel cell and the former stay stable. Nice result here. Yeah. Different kind of natural reformer. Here is a reformer with a uh, fuel cell, all in one piece. Here is LPG reformer. And here now is an autothermal reformer with a methanization of CO2. They transform CO to CO in methane. Here a project that we participate with CESP and CHESP. This is a natural gas reformer. And we put the reformer, uh, uh, we feed with hydrogen the 5 kilowatt fuel cell more detail of the project and reformer. Here we need to desulfurize because this is in Rio de Janeiro. Near, in Rio de Janeiro, near the Mangue, on the sea, we have a lot of sulfur. If you put one piece of copper in one week, they stay, they transform in copper oxide, black copper oxide. You, you can see the burner with two sensors. And here the water injection for the gas shift reaction. And here the all the electronic power control. Here's the reformer. This is the gas shift reactor. The another is reformer is the autothermal reformer. What you saw that all this technology here, we use the same technology on the gasification process. And here, the autothermal reformer, we re use uh, methane, react with uh, oxygen, we will produce carbon monoxide and water. And what we note, uh, wait, well, I've shown more next, next, next slide. Here, the water gas shift reactor and partial oxidation they can see here we see the reformer, the water give gas ship reaction, the prox that we remove the CO2 to produce only hydrogen. Then this hydrogen go direct here. And here we can see all the catalysts that they, they can use on the water gas ship reaction. We can see nickel, iron, cobalt, platinum, pal palladium on the support uh, sodium oxide. Here again, I like this picture here because you can see here the proportion of water, gas, water vapor on ethanol. We saw that if we increase the proportion of water, decrease the, the quantity of carbon on the gas. Then we saw that the, quanti the quantity of water is very important to control the formation of carbon on the carbon on the catalyst of nickel. Here, I had this picture here for about 15 years. But what had changed yesterday? 
here was they will install 200 units. Yesterday changed. 2,000 units were installed in 15 years. It's amazing. Congratulations for Japan. And here we can see uh, the, uh, okay, I'll go back. I think the button is broken. Yeah. Okay, okay. Here we can see the efficient with high heating value. High heating value, if you use high heating value, very low efficient. If we transform to low heating value, the efficient will increase. And here is we have the partial oxidation of ethanol. And here we put a little oxygen, a little oxygen, sub-estechiometric oxygen, and we have a fast response at time, more compact reactor. The disadvantage is that we can have some familiarity we, are work we can work on the range of family limits. The proportion of hydrogen is little, 1.6 to 0.8, but the quality of the gas is much better. And the enthalpy is minus 550. And here we can see the oxidation of carbon forming carbon monoxide. Some design of the reformer. We have very different kind of design. And we can, every company has their own patent in design, this finished design. Here we can saw two plants. One is a co-gasification from the Chaco GE, and here uh, partial oxidation from Linde, it's a German uh, gas company, uh, work with White Martins. And here we can see different kind of energy producing AC energy to the city or the grid. In each place here, we can have hydrogen, produce hydrogen, accumulate hydrogen, stored energy. This is the problem with all this energy here, that you can store it. But with hydrogen, we can store it, and with batteries, we can store all this energy here. But to purify, we mentioned that we, for a fuel cell, we need to purify. Then we need a selective oxidation, a pen-methanization, a palladium membrane, a palladium membrane. On the, on the reformer that we work it, they have the palladium platinum membrane. Also, we have the pressure swing absorption. This is very, is a very nice. There is a, a plant from EOP in Belgium. They have 12 feet. What is this? This is different kind of pressure absorb materials and he absorb, he's absorb, change the pressure, but you, you need to have different vessel. When you have high pressure, you absorb, you close the valve, and go to the other vessel, uh, pressure the other vessel, then you open the valve, dip, uh, disabsorb the first vessel. You are changing, open, if closing, valves to, to happen. You have different materials that absorption materials, different process. Is one kind of process. This is a 25 kilowatt PEM fuel cell that we are, they work with also with clean gas system. 
here they have a reformer. They have the selective uh, oxidation to clean the gas to come through the fuel cell. The desulfurization is also very important. Natural gas and petroleum lead to contain organic sulfur, and there is a poison for the uh, PEM fuel cell and high temperature fuel cell too. They have a, also, I mentioned, the membrane reactor is a selective membrane through palladium, and then they filter the hydrogen, they separate the CO2. This uh, a new project. I have a student they study this. And there is a high efficient solar thermal chemical reactor. They have two steps, one of the oxidation and another that you react with hydrogen. Then with you oxidize the, the, the oxide here and produce hydrogen. This is a very nice uh, project and is the on as uh, DOE, Department of Energy, is one of the future of the hydrogen production. They have the chance to have the lower price. If they use the sun for hot energy for all these reactions. I will talk very little about pyrolysis because from pyrolysis you can produce hydrogen. And you Suani the on the next next uh, next uh, week she will talk about pyrolysis. But what's the difference about combustion, gasification, and pyrolysis? One is combustion with excess of air, gasification, less air, super stoichiometric air. In pyrolysis nowhere. You heat on outside compartment. From here you will produce bio oil and uh, 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 gas, pyrolytic gas and hydrogen. Here you produce uh, more quality uh, hydrogen. Then pyrolysis you heat without uh, if out without oxygen, they could have a little oxygen also. Then we will have fuel. We will produce tars, hydrogen, uh, methane, and car char. Some pyrolysis process use the char to heat the pyrolysis process. Here the oil. The if we compare this oil here, bio oil with petrol is quite similar, but the calorific value of petrol is higher, but it's very similar as petrol. So gasification is where we produce more uh, hydrogen here on the world, and it's a partial oxidation process where carbon, su such as coal, natural gas, or biomass, is broken down in carbon monoxide, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and methane. Here we can see this burn here. In this side here, you have combustion, excess of oxygen. This place here, you saw, is it not yellow. Here is a pyrolysis, no oxygen, but all oxygen are burning using here. Here, you have a little a light here says gasification with less oxygen. And here you have charcoal. And th this, this is a simple demonstration that you see the four process. Combustion, pyrolysis, gasification, and ca charcoal formation. For gasification, you can ha have, you can use Latin American coal we have a very good uh, uh, calorific uh, heating uh, value, like here, 600 kilocal per kilo, the enthalpy here, 
and very high here. We compare br Brazilian coal with a little, but we ha have also very good coal. This coal we can produce hydrogen. Here we can saw using biomass. We also have uh, in our composition here we can see on biomass we have hydrogen and we have carbon. With carbon you can produce hydrogen using water gas ship reaction. Here you can see the, the hydrogen. It's all here, all here, it's a problem. And here is another unity, but here we saw uh, 70 megajoules per kilo. It's a, a very good data, but it's if you compare with kilocal, a little uh, the, the enthalpy is little that the coal. Coal is much better. But nice data here. Here we can have different kind of gasifier. Can fluid that bed and train flow fixed bed, but 77% of the gasifier are fixed bed. 20% fluid that bed. You can see the application for different kind of technology. You need to the feedstock would be different. In train flow, let's have the biggest and the mass production of hydrogen. You need to have fine particle or in liquid form. The rust they use here, this process here from oil. They use. Uh, in form of liquid. It's a stone, then the, the heat, the, the, the stone, the liquid, turn liquid, then they inject inside the reactor. They, you can see the different kind of classification process. They have a, a fixed bed, a co-current, a contra-current. We have the circulation fluid that bed. Uh, Stationary unit bed, and here is the different kind of up the up flow in train flow, in down flow in train flow, and big company working with classification. Here is a very new data I take yesterday. All the classification plant on the wall, and here we can see the, the data. Here, look here. Brazil have very big gasification plant. All reformer. This here is more reformer plant, and this here, the on the middle, is from Araqua Araucaria. If you go to this site, he will show you all data from the plant. It's very nice plant. In China, very big places, very big gasifiers. Here is a also we had a lot of projects, 2,800 gasifier, and this technology grow very fast. It's amazing. Here the sing gas uh, production for different kind of product. A look here, refinery for hyd hydrogen for refinery. Hydro hydrogen. Then we see we have a lot of hydrogen. Hydrogen is not the problem. The problem is the distribution of the hydrogen on our house, on the companies, but not on the refinery. This is this is the problem for the hydrogen economy. But we have hydrogen. We have the technology. Look here, what happened? Huh? 2008. 2010, look here. Amazing. Production of hydrogen. Here. And here's some process to produce the fuel. For example, diesel. Then you have the gasification, gas conditioning, fissure trough. 
then to produce diesel. The name is PTL to diesel, to liquid. Oh, sorry. This is a project that I participate on IPT. Is to produce uh, hydrogen from biogas, from biomass, bagas, bagas from sugarcane. Then the project was one ton hydrogen, and we produce 3.0 kilo hour from hydrogen, and also the other byproduct is CO2. This is the day of the project. You can see here. We in this plant we produce. 260 kilogram of tin gas and start with two process we, con we will control refection and pyrolysis process this is different kind of thermal power gasification and here we can see the one ton biomass 40 bars and we will explain why we use 40 bars this is a reason why we use 40 bar high pressure on the gasification process? Because if you use low pressure for the fissure trough process, you need pressure. Then if you need to pressure, uh, feed the gas pumping and the thing gas compression, we, we will lose energy. The total energy that we do, you will lose 22, megawatt you lost energy uh, but if you produce gas creation with 50 bars you consume only five megawatt then sometimes it's better to increase the pressure of the, your plant this is the meaning reason that on the electrolysis they also try to have electrolysis production hydrogen production which higher pressure because when you need to pump compress the hydrogen to the tank, to the cylinder, you lost energy. And then is the reason that we have today electrolyzers with 60 bars pressure. As you could see, gasification, shift reaction, clean gas, look here. 50% of the plan is clean glass process. 50% of 40, 50% from the capex is clean glass. This is the reason that clean gas is, it, is, is not good for the, for the plant. It's very expensive. But if you use, for example, this gas with high temperature fuel cell that we can operate with some impurity, reduce the cost of the gas cleaning. So the gas cleaning depends where you up use your hydrogen. He said we compare different kind of gasification process. And here, the efficient energy, where you lost energy, so the plant have a small plant 41% efficient. Here the zero fraction lost 18% uh, efficient. Here the pyrolysis weight 16%, gasification 12%, shift reaction only 1%, gas cleaning 7%. When we start with a bigger plan, 550 megawatt, the efficient increase, but all these data stay the same. One that's very nice in this project, in an optimistic plan, the return of investment is 286%, a very high number. We need to, I ever think that we not start to construct, we need to calculate the price have an estimate of the price. So, what we can do with thin gas? A lot of things. We can, with thin gas, you can use fissure trough, produce gasoline, naphtha, diesel, methanol, DME, dimethyl ether, acetic, 
methyl acetate or hydrogen for fuel cell refinery or also thing as for fuel cell combustion motors uh, gas turbine can use in fast application thing gas but our thing gas you need catalyst special catalyst then we have a special industry that they study only the catalyst that we use on the thin gas production on or on the methanol route so we start with electrolyzer is very uh, nice product we can have a very clean gas but but they consume a lot of energy to produce energy to a fuel cell you produce about you need about 5 kilowatt 5.3 kilowatt or 4 kilowatt to produce 1 kilowatt on the fuel cell but is this is not good also this is good depend of the price that you have on the energy for Itaipu is the more beautiful scenarios they didn't didn't pay for the energy they have a low price for the high for the energy and then the energy that you produce with the fuel cell is very low but they can store energy but with hydrogen you can store you can pipe the the, the hydrogen the pipe from Itaipu to Sao Paulo is a very big storage hydrogen tank. And then here we can use the electrolyzer. We, do, we divide the, uh, the, the water in hydrogen oxygen into compartments, the anode and cathode, and we have the oxidation of the hydrogen and reduction of the oxygen. The same that we, you have on the fuel cell. The advantage of the electrolyzers, the product hydrogen is very pure. They don't need to be stored. It's much easier and safer to supply than bottle of hydrogen, like here, my cylinder gas. I just put on the stock, on the tension. I know I can produce in this moment hydrogen for my fuel cell. Now that way, I would transport the cylinder. At this, at this time, hydrogen electrolyzer would be more easy. Here you calculate the efficiency of the electrolyzer, but you change the number here, the position of the number for high heating value, because in this side here, invert the formula. We can cr create the pressure, but the gas, gas can generate it at not released until a high pressure has built inside the electrolyzer. The pressure will be increasing inside the electrolyzer. Then you open the valve, you have the pressure. You can also, from biological, Productant have hydrogen, and you have the PEM electrolyzer. It's very similar a fuel cell. You have the anode, you have the cathode. Here we have the different kind of construction. But look, it's a PEM fuel cell. It's the same PEM fuel cell, but it's a different material. The electrodes are different because. If you use carbon here on high tension, we will oxidize the, the carbon. Then you need to have a different materials. They use titanium. And titanium you can use with iridium oxide of with uh, of, uh, I forget the name. Okay, I rem no, okay use titanium and in iridium 
one side and uh, oh, forget. Here we can see the catalyst I use. This is from high tech electrolyzer. You also use the platinum, also use the Vulcan, Stacarm Black. Uh, e, uh, the name is ruthenium oxide, iridium and ruthenium oxide as coating. Because the titanium, if the oxide, he will produce a little coating inside and you have a problem, contact, electric contact problem. If you use ruthenium oxide or, or iridium oxide, the resistance will be very low, electric resistance will be very low. Here you can see the titanium current collector and here's the some microscope uh, pictures on the, the this is spherical particle of this kind of material current. It's a sintered titanium particle here. This also we can study here in some University of São Paulo. Here is a very, very high-tech electrolyzer, very new electrolyzer. There's, there is no more than five years. You produce 60 bars with a PEM electrolyzer, 60 bars. The normal electrolyzer, you produce seven bars. The maximum, the best electrolyzer, 15 bars. It is a 60 bar PEM. Here's uh, another supplier, suppliers of water electrolysis. Here we can compare different suppliers of the pe water PEM. One is the proton oxide, is very famous. ETM, also very famous. Hydrogenics, also very famous. Siemens. And the, the maximum pressure that they can produce, look here. 75 bar. Fantastic. Fantastic. But the alkaline water electrolysis, when start? Oh, very old technology. But very old technology that run every day. This is a new technology also. They develop, evolve, evolve this technology. It's not more the same technology as 100 years ago. And here, what happened is they use KOH, and what the ion does are on the system is uh, a OH minus. Big size, two megawatt electrolyzer on the fabrication, you saw the size is bigger, much bigger than the PEM fuel cell. Then if you need too much hydrogen, it's not a PEM fuel cell, it's an alkaline fuel cell. And here you can compare, can compare different kind of electrolyte, sodium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide, and here you can see the concentration with the, the concentration of the solution. Here we can also we compare different kind of suppliers. Look here, so many suppliers on uh, water electrolysis. All this here is always very good. But here you can note the pressure. But this here does have, have a compressor to compress the hydrogen. Another different kind. Stewart, very famous. Teladyne, very famous. Proton, North Hydrogen. All this is very famous company. Very big companies. So we start now with a new development. New development. High temperature steam electrolysis. This is a high temperature oxide fuel cell. But we change the site. We change its opposite size. 
Then we use also uh, zirconium here. We have the same electrolyte, zirconium oxide, with yttria. And here we have the uh, water vapor plus electron. And here we can saw the oxygen side. Then we produce hydrogen. But also they produce this uh, SOFC, high temperature. And they can produce hydrogen from this process. And this company, they work also with uh, fuel uh, process, and they can produce from also using syngas application. Detail of the process: steam, renewable electricity, the carbon. They will produce a syngas is also a, a chemical reactor. Another point, this is from Fran Barbie. Some, someone asked me about the uh, electrochemical hydrogen compressor. It's uh, like a PEM fuel cell, but they use only one side of fuel cell. Here is hydrogen, here is hydrogen, but different concentration of hydrogen. Then you have uh, oxidation of the hydrogen. The hydrogen comes to see this side here and increase the pressure of the hydrogen. Then we work in looping, then we're increasing the technology. He presents here on the World Hydrogen Economy Conference in Rio de Janeiro last month. Hydrogen safety is very important. This is a Zeppelin. But one important point is uh, the number of was 77, but only two thirds of people survived. The problem uh, was the people was burned by the diesel fuel for, from the propulsion system, not from hydrogen. And the problem was the skin of the airship was made of a high flammable component. And that was the problem from the hydrogen. It, it burned, but what the cause was not the hydrogen. was electrostatic between here and the aircraft. It's a static, electrostatic energy. Then start to burn the, the skin of the airship. Here we can compare propane and hydrogen. We saw that propane have a lower ignition limit, 1.7. Hydrogen have four. But propane with a little more can ignite, but hydrogen 77%. All is gases, dangerous gases. We need to care, take care. The same protection we use we have with hydrogen, we have with, we need to have with propane. All are fuel. Here's a car test from DOE with oil and with hydrogen. Here we have a valve that open the valve and start burn the hydrogen. And the color is a colorless, a little blue. Oh, hydrogen tank. I will fast run a little now. We have a different kind of technology of to armazen the hydrogen in high pressure cylinder, in liquid hydrogen, and absorb hydrogen absorb on intensive site. And here you can see that the gravimetric density and volumetric density that here, for example complex compound, you have very high volumetric density of kilo of hydrogen per cubic meter. Different kind of materials, you can here compare the, the 700 bars with the volumetric of the tank, and here the chemical compound, the uh, AB liquid, the volumetric system. 
I will show like an aim. Here we can compare with uh, hydrate, the, the same quantity of four kilo hydrogen here, here, and with hydrogen tank two bars, 200 bars. But if you increase the pressure, you will decrease proportional the size of the tank. Here you can see the liquid hydrogen tank from GM, and here the aluminum with uh, carbon fiber for 700 bars. Here we can compare uh, the steel cylinder, 200 bars, and the carbon with aramid fiber, epoxy, is aluminum tank. And here we can see uh, the the mass of hydrogen storage here and here. We saw that we have much more hydrogen in this cylinder as in this cylinder. Then we know that with uh, the, this kind of technology, it's much more, uh, you, ha you can have much more hydrogen inside. Some problem with hydrogen, we need special materials, the hydrogen environment in Bramington, and they could break if you don't you crack, if you don't use uh, special materials for hydrogen. If I use uh, hydrate, I had also different kind of, you can store much more on hydrate as in liquid hydrogen. This one of the place that you show the future, what could happen. But today I will show you something I never know yesterday I'm studying about a new application I will show you later. This is a ovonic tank from metal hydride. The different kind of materials, you, I will send you the presentation for you, you have time to read. And he, all, every time you have where I, I put, receive this data. This reaction of lanthanum nickel, AB5, different types of materials you can use is the AB5. Different kinds of materials, form that you can use to store energy. Again, again, you can see volume of hydrogen. I have two minutes, I run a little. Okay, we compare different kinds of hydrogen, methane, ammonia to show you. So here are some sites you can send, you can have some look. They have a very nice site here, have a lot of information that you have. And I think try every site here to you will see very nice uh, data. So thank you again. Every time I told you, Professor Simões. <laughs> okay, then again, let's go to the break, and so you can also talk to him. Okay, I'll see you in. 20 minutes. <laughs>